Don't write from your head. Do not write trying to follow trends or anything like that. Write what's in your heart and soul. Mark Allen is a world famous author, publisher, musician, and magician when it comes to winning the inner game of life. Publisher of 550 world changing books at his company New World Library, including The Power of Now by Eckhart Tolle and Creative Visualization by Shakti Gawain, as well as authors like Deepak Chopra, Wayne Dyer, and Mother Teresa. Musician of seven albums and author of 18 books, including The Millionaire Course, Visionary Business, Tantra for the West, and my all time favorite, because it has actionable steps and meditations, the audio version of his book, The Magical Path Creating the Life of Your Dreams and a World that Works for All. Welcome, Mark. Oh, thank you so much. Thanks for that sweet introduction. Hello and welcome to the Write the Book Inside You podcast. Tips, tools and interviews for coaches and healers like you who want to write a non-fiction book to boost your visibility, clients and cash flow while making a difference. I'm your host, Carol Westmore, a multi-published author and energy psychology tapping book coach. Now let's jump into today's episode. Mark, your publishing company, New World Library, has published over 650 world-changing books. As a world-famous publisher and author yourself, what are the secrets in today's age and time for writing and publishing non-fiction books? I think they haven't changed through the years. I really don't. The, the secret of writing a good book really is write from your heart, write what is inside you, just like the title of your wonderful podcast. Don't write from your head. Do not write trying to follow trends or anything like that. Write what's in your heart and soul and what is really meaningful to you. That that aligns with me. What what about when it comes to traditional, which you are versus the self publishing route? I've taken because perhaps my belief was that I didn't, I wouldn't be chosen by a traditional publisher. But do you think there's scope for both in the world today? Yeah, there there is, and I think I mean self publishing is wonderful. Uh, I tell people now, there's no excuse not to be published anymore. With self-publishing, if you can't get a traditional publisher, uh, you can self-publish. I started self-publishing. I just self-published a few little books. And then my girlfriend at the time named Shakti Gawain did a book we published called Creative Visualization. And suddenly we had this word of mouth bestseller and a whole company grew up around my self-publishing efforts. Now there, there, there also is a nice thing in between self-publishing and a real uh, established publisher. And that is all these hybrid publishing mm. companies like She Writes is one I know where the author does put up some money, but the company usually like matches the money and really publishes the book well, really has good distribution and promotion and, and sells some books. And, and I was going to say, I'm like, there's always been these vanity publishers that are ripoffs for authors where they charge authors a lot of money to publish their book, but they don't sell any books. They make their money off the authors. So I tell authors, check the, the websites of these potential publishers. If they're charging you money, make sure they're selling books. Make sure those books are in stores or, you know, they definitely should be in Amazon, but even ask them what kind of distribution do they have? Do they sell books? Because you want to be published with a publisher that makes their money off selling your book, not off you as an author. And is that is has that been your model at New World Library to this day? And you know what what has changed? Or is it, are you still doing it the same way and getting results for your authors? Right, we're still doing it the same way. I have a good, solid, traditional publisher that gives the author an advance and does not ask any money from the author, we 
really try to sell books and and we make our money off book sales. We we don't charge the author. Mm. These but there are some good publishers now that are doing partnerships with authors and uh, the author puts up some money, the publisher puts up some money and and then they sell the book. And there it if the book sells, it can be even a better deal for author, though they had to invest, but they usually split then the income 50-50. And, and if you've already self-published, would you say you have you would need to show sales of at least 1,000 or 2,000 books? Would a, a, place, a, a publisher like yourself still be interested in a self-published book? Definitely. We have picked up self-published books. Any Any publisher will. And yeah, if you can sell a thousand, two thousand on your own, uh, you'll get some interest from some publisher because in a way you've done the marketing research. You've shown this book will sell. Would that be a minimum uh, barrier to to do? Let's say you haven't sold a thousand. Would you? Would yeah. it still be worthwhile approaching a publisher like New World Lab? Uh, it'd be worthwhile. There really isn't a minimum number, and if especially if you can say, look, I haven't done anything to promote the book. Uh, you know, then, then uh, a, a publisher will look at it. But more and more, what publishers look at today is what you, as an author, can do to promote your book. Uh, do you have a mailing list? You, you know, where are you on social media? The buzz phrase now is, "What's the author's platform?" <clears throat> that is something that has changed over the years. It used to be basically we would publish anything that the editor, some editor has to love it. Authors and agents are always asking me what we're looking for. And all I can say is books we love, something yes. we love. That's We used to publish anything the editors loved. Now, in, over the last, oh, it's probably been 15 years now, whatever it is, we have our acquisitions committee with marketing there and finance, looking at the amount of advance and stuff. But marketing will all, we'll, the editor will pitch a book. Oh, I love this book. This is really cool. And the marketing people will say, what's the author's platform? Mm. Meaning, do they have, how, how many books do you think they can sell or generate sales from their mailing list, from their, uh, do they do anything online? Do they do online seminars? Will they stay behind the book? The best books are the authors stay behind them and do uh, courses, online courses or or physical, you know, seminars and things with the same title as the book. In other words, the author stays behind that book and helps sell. So there's we, a back end, would you call it, to the book that 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 has tentacles in many places. And would it be something like the power of now? Do you continue to market it over the years? I mean, you know, people say you can't just put your book out there and then go on to the next one. Do you think it's important to have an ongoing uh, marketing plan for your book over the years? I, I Well, yeah, but it definitely, uh, with a publisher, will dwindle over the years as they do more books. But that is, it's interesting you bring up Power of Now, because I do, I do really believe if a bigger publisher would have done it, or a smaller, you probably never would have heard about it. We were just the right size to get really get it out there with good distribution, and we stayed behind it. The first year it did like 7,500 copies, which isn't bad for us, but a big publisher would have just gone on to their next list with their next 300 titles for their fall list. We stayed behind it for even a couple of years. I remember we had it at the LA Book Fair on piles of it on a table two, three years after it was after it was out. And that's where Oprah came by and saw it and picked it up. That's because we stayed behind it. You know, once Oprah, the Holy Grail. <laughs> get your you must- book on Oprah. That's all you need to do. <laughs> Mark, you must have had it on your visualization and affirmation list, <laughs> or Eckhart Tolle maybe did. Um, maybe he he said he knew he knew the book would do well, and he has he has like no ego. He he walks his talk, but he just said he knew he knew as he wrote the book, this book will have an impact in the world. He and, was convinced. And how did you actually pick it up? You know, I mean, oh, you were still small then, weren't you? The new world. Oh app. yeah, I often say it was the answer to a prayer. I'm mm-hmm. convinced. One thing in Magical Path, I talk about the power of prayer, and I remember it was the summer of '99. 
I was walking around. I had my big white house on a hill. I had my five-year visual or my path. You know, I had my dream life. I really had. And uh, I, I started this prayer saying, I want to take it up a notch, both in inner peace and in abundance financially. I want to, I want to take a quantum leap. In both things. A week or two after I started praying that, I prayed it every day walking around my house. My marketing guy came, I ran into him in the hallway. He said, he was just talking to this little distributor in Canada named Barbara Dempsey. And he asked her what was her best selling book. She said, The Power of Now. And no one had, she said, Oh, it only sells in Canada. It's been published in Canada. But she distributed our books. She distributed you know, we're New World Library. She distributed Hay House as well. All these spiritual publishers. She had a lot of good books on her list. And this book from someone no one had known, he did not have any kind of platform at all. I don't even think he had a computer. He wrote his book in longhand. Is that so? <laughs> yeah, no, he was just doing these little tiny things. And his book was selling so well in Canada. My marketing guy told me about that. I immediately called Barbara Dempsey and immediately got the name of the publisher. And she said, oh, we've been thinking about talking to an American publisher. She sent me a copy. I knew within 30 seconds that that book was absolutely unique, brilliant. Yeah. So, so would it work like that today? Someone just inspired to write their book. And do, do you think these, these magical happenings still, still occur? For, for writers and authors. Yeah, they do. There, there still are those amazing books that are word of mouth that just start selling. You got to get them into the stores so they sell. But Or, I mean, I've known authors who've only sold on Amazon, but they've sold a lot yes. on Amazon. So yeah, there still are all these stories. I hear a lot of, of people that that break all the rules. You know, the rules are, the rules are promotion is just as important as the book itself. And you have to stay behind that book promoting. And there's all kinds of things you should do. I mean, the list is endless. You, can, you, can, you can't possibly do everything that's possible to promote your book because there's so you could spend the rest of your lifetime promoting a single book. So you just do what feels right and, and hope that something works. Yes, thank you. I mean, we we on this podcast today we haven't gone into your your approach to visualization and affirmations, but I just wanted to really say that I appreciated one of the courses I did with you, and one of the things I took away, which we haven't mentioned, is that unlike many publishers, you don't have to approach New World Library through an agent. Now, you may <laughs> you may not want to tell the whole world that, but is it true? That you can, yeah, no. We invite uh, uh, authors just to send directly to us too. I'd say half of our books that we publish are roughly are probably directly with the authors, and half are with agents. Either way is fine. That's that's great. So so thank you for coming on the podcast and giving some inspiration and background um, insight into writing the book inside you. My mission is is to help. Um, holistic people with a, a, a vision of changing the world and of healing the world to get their books out there. And that's one of the things I really want to end on this on the note that you, I think, which you haven't talked about, also have that vision of making a difference in the world, don't you, Mark? Let's yes. end on that. Yeah. Tell us yeah, about yeah. that. Yeah, I mean, in, in every one of our books, we just, we publish books that change people's lives and change the world. That's that's our focus. And it's a wonderful way to end this, this interview. Thank you once again. Thank you, Carol. Thanks for joining me on today's podcast. Want a free gift to inspire you further on your book writing adventure? My free checklist, five book hook tips to kickstart your book writing journey will help you get clarity on the key essentials to make your book a winner. Download it at writethebookinsideyou.com forward slash free gift. The links are in the show notes. Until next time, a big virtual hug and keep writing. <laughs>